The team nuts oh, still there? Or team bridge? He ran back. No, team team not came. Oh, yeah. Top barrel's not in anymore. He's, he's in the corner still. Oh. Yeah, kill one! Here! Yeah. I knocked him there. Yep. Wait. Wait, what the f- What the f- Don't worry about it, don't worry I'm about getting it. hacked, I'm getting hacked! Bro. I know, I know, it's sure. Can you play the game? Bro, I, I'm getting hacked! I know, but can you play? Can you play? Yeah, but it, I'm, it's cheating! Is but, it fucking up your game? Yes, I can see everyone! Like, I'm- You need to leave, you need to leave, you need to leave. I, I, I didn't leave the game, right? Wait, yeah, I'm game. leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Bro, like, what the bro, f- Admin's down, Nick, Admin's down. Nick, Admin's down. No, <laughs> I, I left, I left. I left. Soon after. Dude, can we shoot height? Can we shoot height? Yeah, yeah, shoot now. I'm, I'm, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating! I'm, I'm fucking shit, I got aimbot, I have aimbot! Oh no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have aimbot right now, I literally have aimbot. Leave the game! What if I just don't shoot? Can we get to another building? Uh, Smoke that off! Guy. So, Raven, tell them I have aimbot right now! Okay, wait, well, no, I'm, I'm back. back. Yeah. In the bed, in the uh, I'm cheating. No, I'm, I, I can't shoot, I can't shoot. Get inside, get inside! I don't have a smoke. You gotta res in, you gotta res up. Oh. I can't. I knocked one, I knocked one. I'm resing, they're trying to get in. Block me, block, block. Watch across the goal. I can't shoot, I can't shoot. I killed one, I killed one. I got a fall. Why are we playing this game out so? And I caught on Destroyer, please, you stupid motherfucker. Leave me alone, man. They, they stopped it. Holy... Does did, you aim the, did you aim at that cask at the end? No, well, I can't tell because I just looked at them in controller, bro. I can't tell if I aimbotted it. I looked on my screen, it looked like I just shit on him. 1v1. Like, it was on the door, and I just one-magged him. The, on the caustic, it looked like I just straight up just one-clipped him on a controller. But I obviously don't know because... ...and to be a successful this high-level predator, right? Those are two very difficult, time-consuming tasks to do. I wish I could join and literally talk to them because they're clueless. Mm. Mm. Privacy software? Maybe. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. He's talking yeah, yeah, about the yeah. Apex drama right now, and he asked me to ask me to join the call. Oh, oh right now. Yeah. Yeah, go for it, dude. I told him. Yo. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. What about you? Oh, uh, we're doing good. Yeah. I, I don't know if you know this. Uh, Thor, Pirate Software, and I are discussing it. He's currently being yeah. a boomer, unable to join this call. Oh. <laughs> talking about this hack. Uh, uh, are you familiar with Thor? Uh, I oh, I know of. Oh, I've seen Pirate Software a few times. I've seen the stream. Yeah. Oh, hello. So if you don't if you don't know my background for stuff, I've been in uh, offensive security in the gaming industry for about twenty years. So before this, I was the lead of application security for Blizzard Entertainment, which okay. is all of Blizzard's websites globally. I was a senior red team specialist for them, and I have three black badges from DEF CON, And my last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. Jesus, time, dude. Throughout, yeah. In my time throughout the industry, I've banned over 2 million players for cheating in games. So, like, this is 100% my wheelhouse. And we've been talking okay. about the potentials for what could be going on here. And I'm still not seeing any evidence of remote code ex execution just yet. No. Hey, let me give you a quick, let me give you a quick intro as well. Hey, my name's Prem yeah. been programming for a long time. I've created such a security flaw that it got it, its own name on Twitch or on, on Netflix as the most egregious bug that has ever existed on the surface ever. Uh, in fact, a simple while loop could have taken down all of Netflix and you could not have gone back. So that's so my security opposite. thing is I have Nick. created the most egregious bug ever. Okay. The repulsive grizzly attack. Proud of you. Thank you. That's pretty good. You may have heard of it before. So you said you talked to the hacker. How did they verify who they were? Uh, basically, he, I think he's a viewer of mine or a viewer of the Apex community. He, first of all, he gifted me 4,000 packs in game. And he gifted okay. uh, multiple thousands of packs to other people uh, without like wow. taking any money. Uh, that's like a four thousand dollars approximately. Um, and also he has this uh, bot or like multi boxing bot that makes like forty people land on top of you and kill you, like punch you out. I saw that. And he I was watched that video. Yeah, my bad. What are you about to say? No, I said I watched that video where they were summing all the bots. We were actually just reviewing yeah. this. The the original videos that went off that showed those those two players using cheat tools did not does not prove RCE. A lot of people are claiming it's remote code execution. What it does prove is that their machines are compromised. Yeah. Whether it's compromised through remote code execution or it's compromised because they download something something stupid is unknown. So we, we can't jump to conclusions on it. This one though, where he summons in all the bots and sending you all the packs like that. 
makes me believe that he has some kind of access to the server in a way where he's able to get all of these items and gift them to you, being able to manipulate the server to summon all the bots. That's a much more scary vuln than what he was doing to those two players during that game. Yeah, that's what he can do. I spoke with him. Uh, I actually have a YouTube video uh, where I speak with him. If you want me to find it, I can send it to you. Is, oh, is that one real? I, I couldn't tell. It was, uh, yeah, Mandy, you have the I interviewed a cheat developer, Destroyer 2009. Yes. So that was legitimately, so this that's was him. Like during the pack giving and all that, so you actually knew. All right, I've got it. I'm going to link this yeah. over. Yeah, that's the, that's the older one that I grabbed. Oh. This one was from so a, this month came a month ago. So this guy's been doing this for a while then. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he has. Um, he's been landing on people. He's been just like normal cheating, you know, like the the classic aimbot wall hack type thing. And um, yeah. but he's also been like he definitely knows some server side stuff, and I've been speaking to him. It'd have to be, yeah, you'd have to be at that point. If he's been doing this for long enough, the the things that I'm worried about, these are the potentials out of this, right? I'm still not seeing evidence of remote code execution, but I am seeing evidence of a compromised server. I'm seeing evidence of maybe a compromised employee. Or like a, an employee's machine could be compromised. It gives him extra access to this. That'd be something I'm worried about. Or a client that's able to send information to the server that the server then accepts that it shouldn't be. Which all three of those possibilities are highly likely based on what he's able to do here. Yeah. With remote code execution, that means that you're getting execution of arbitrary code on the end target. So if he has RCE to the server, that would make sense. That doesn't mean he has RCE to each individual player's client. That's a very different thing, if that makes sense. Yeah. So what's, so what's, what what is yep. the point has he like tried to like sell a cheat is it is there any like reasons that you're seeing beyond or that he's it, talked about but beyond just the point of him being able to do it and give you guys a bunch of packs or uh, the thing is it seems like it's for attention because he could literally ruin the guy that jen, jen burton uh he's called the first guy he did it on he could literally ruin someone's career because if he didn't yeah. write his name in chat so everybody knew who it was he would have ruined his career mm -hmm. right there right but he's obviously just yeah, doing it for attention also um he's been doing it to the bigger streamers uh, he's been doing it to me hal jen burton i'm not sure if someone else got gifted subs or uh, like gifted not the subs my bad gifted packs but he he told me i just sent you the new link by the way also he told me uh when i spoke to him that that you can uh, you, you can see in the link now that like there's like 40 people landing on me um and he told me that yeah. You know, uh, that he's just doing it for fun because why not? Yeah. As obviously, yeah, no, that's, is, a, that's a pretty common. That's a huge common driver. So, like, I've I've been part of the hacking community for a super long time, right? Like those black badges that I was talking about. That's from DEF CON, the hacking convention that happens in Vegas every year. There's about thirty thousand of us show up, and we we you know compete with each other and have fun. Inside of that community, there's not always a monetary driver. Some of the times, it's just because hey, I want to do something that no one else can do. I want to beat the puzzle, right? And the puzzle may just be, I want to see if I can turn this company's game inside out. Totally, totally a normal thing. Yeah. So that drive is not as uncommon as, as anyone would think. That's a very common drive. Yeah, the, the old meme of for the lulls, right? It's, it's, an old, yeah. it's an old meme for that. With this, I'm mostly interested not in what drives the attacker, because I understand that that kind of that side of the house is super complete. The thing that interests me is what level of access does he actually have? Because if it's a client that's sending things up to the server, and the server is vulnerable, right? And he's sending things up that cause remote code execution. There's a couple of different ways to do that. So you could be sending a packet that's malformed, and there's a certain level of buffer that is on the end of that packet, like a certain amount of text, that goes outside of those bounds. And we call this a buffer overflow. That buffer overflow could then maybe, potentially, execute code, right? And with those, you may have a character limit. So he might be restricted in how much he can put there. But if there is no character limit, he could write a whole shitload of code to the server. And things like what you're talking about, he could do. Well formed being like able your to summon in forehead. bots. He just write a script for it once he figures it out through a lot of testing, a lot of research, finds a way to do it on a very small scale, finds a way to scale it up, and then really and then goes and launches that, right? The thing with those two individual players, though, that still looks like a compromised end, end user account. So I don't think, based on what we have. I don't think that the attacker has individual access to Apex players' machines, if that yeah. makes sense. I do think he has access to the server in, one, in some capacity, whatever that capacity is. But to be able to get individual RCE access onto an end user's machine, that means the end user's machine has to have that vulnerability. That means the client has to be vulnerable, not just the server. So he'd have to ping pong from a vulnerable server and then down to each vulnerable client. 
which is a much wilder vulnerability. Like, chaining like that is not yeah. easy shit, and it means that the Voln has to exist there in the first place. So for me, Occam's Razor, I think he's compromised those two individual users' machines and done that to them remotely because their machines were compromised, and I think he's accessing the server in a way because the server is vulnerable in some way. Based on current information, that yeah. could change. Right? Yeah, he told me also, he can access all accounts he wants to, though. He told me he can go on my account, he can open packs. He told me he can sure. buy stuff from my account. Yeah, that'd be you know? sure. so, so here's the thing, though. All of those things that you're talking about, where you could go into my account and buy packs and do that, that's all server side. None yeah, of that no. is being done on your client. So if you're going into someone's account and doing something like that, and again, he didn't do it. He claimed it. He claimed he could, which doesn't mean it's real. You, you have to prove that kind of stuff, right? Trust, yeah. but ver verify. Trust yeah, that course. he's telling the truth, but verify the claim. So in this case, let's say he could do that. All those actions are server-side actions. So if he had access to the server, he absolutely could. But he doesn't have access to your machine. So if he can change, you know, if he can issue payments, if he can do things like changing your inventory, if he could delete your account, if he can do all that kind of stuff, that is server-side access. If he can place a script or a program on your computer and then execute that, that is client access. And that's way more dangerous, like way worse, if that makes sense. That's an alpha mail right there. I'm also yeah. curious if it, if it really is like malformed oh, packets shoot. and being able to send things Did up to the server. Did he fart? Uh, what kind of other control can he have within that? Can he actually just terminate e games? Right? W kind of W W W. Uh, you know, that is gross. All sorts of problems. Nails, just snails, jails, tails. He actually just wreak havoc in like a really destructive way. Because that would honestly be the worst thing for Apex. Is not that he can summon 40 people and make it feel like you're in a zombie survival game, but that he, he could actually ruin the general player's experience. And do they yeah. have that type of vulnerability just sitting open, which is really wild. That's a much different level. Dude, uh, 10 to 25% of all people that play Apex cheat in high rank. Like, well, yeah, li li I, I, whenever, yeah. whenever I sit and play, at least like six people per game get banned almost. And that's like 10% really? of the lobby, yes. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and, I'm not surprised. and the yeah. thing is, the problem is, they made, you know, you know, companies, they made bad updates, right? Yeah. Sometimes they make good, sometimes they make bad. And they made an update where if you're three stacking, the lowest rank, like rookie four, can queue with number one pred, like number one uh, highest rank. Sense. You know? Yeah. So, so you've, got, you've got an issue with, with uh, ranking balance, and that's not great. Yeah. yeah. What's the, what's the, what is that called in the professional world where you, you tailgate behind somebody, where you go behind them through security? Is that pretty much what's happening right yeah. there? You have no, a high rank player that's just letting in the cheaters. <laughs> you're basically just allowing a like a high rank player to just trash a low rank player, but also it, it creates a, a more worse like a worse issue where somebody who gets banned can get back up to f messing with the higher ranked players very quickly. You know that's that's the issue when you have a lobby that works that way, where you know you're letting the lower rank players up into the higher rank players area very quickly. You know you just you kind of ferment an account for a little bit and then get it back up there to bother people. It's um it's why League of Legends requires you to be maximum level before you can go into rank play. Yeah, yeah. It's to make that process slower. It doesn't actually stop them, but it slows them down. Yeah. But the thing is, what, the problem is like how do they how, how do you, if if you watch the clip, of course, of Jen, you've probably seen it. I guess uh, if you see the clip, he, there's a literal client. Yep. But like yeah. in the game opening, you know, so it feels much different than the Hal one too, because the Hal one had no client. It, it was, was just only straight auto yeah. aim, and he was locked on. Whereas this one actually was a transparent window. It looked like it was actually built with in-game stuff, yes, or something yeah. like it, because it it kind of melded into the game. Yeah. yeah. So we, I've actually got this up here. Hey, sadly, so you can see this right here, the TSM halal hook, right? Yeah. yeah. So this this pops up, which means this dude's machine is compromised. We don't know if that compromise happened through the client or if that happened because he downloaded something stupid, right? At the same time, we have a tweet right here, which is very funny to me. Yeah. Wait, uh, let me turn up uh, so I can listen. Wait, uh, yeah. let me turn up uh, so I yeah. can listen. I'm ready? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is my favorite. I'm ready? Or my favorite video. Oh, this is my favorite. Prime, video. wait. Or my favorite video. Prime, oh, I, I can't tell if I'm clicking oh God, your Prime, video or my video. Prime, shut up. Oh my God, Prime, your shut up. Prime, video. shut up. Okay, I was downloading. What is this? Free download. Okay, I'm downloading it. Yeah, but like, uh, that's just him being stupid. Like, <laughs> I'm like come on. Yes. <laughs> let's, say this, let's say this happened a month ago. Let's say this happened a month ago, right? Let's yeah. say that he's, he's not screwing around and he actually just downloaded something random on the internet. Anything that you download, anything at all that you put on that machine, that machine could have been compromised for months, man. Yeah. So that's why I look at these types of things and I'm like, okay, you know, if this is if this is a joke thing, cool. 
But if it's not a joke thing and he actually did that, you always think about those types of things. For this, we still don't have any indication that it's RC on the client. I would love to see the met method for this, the mechanism for that. that was, but again, by we the still way, don't have it. Sorry for interrupting, but that was after the clip. That one right there is after he got hacked. So he, he's, he's down, yeah, he's downloading uh, what's called malware bytes. Oh, so it happened after that. Yeah. Sure. Like it thinks he's cheating. The, yeah, like easy anti cheat or whatever. So easy anti cheat thought that he was cheating. Interesting. Yeah, he, the, thing is, interesting. the thing is, the thing is, he could turn on. A, do you have a host for that? Let me see if your host was streaming. Oh, the key playing Yeah, because any, anytime we do investigation stuff, for me, it's That's like I'm saying. it's going to be the minimum until we can prove more, right? And I find that the internet generally takes the opposite approach. They're like, the sky is falling, everything's on fire. And I'm like, no, dude, just yeah. wait. It's, it's just a bunch of just Hitlers wait, and RCs you know? out there. That's what I'm playing today, you know? Right? <laughs> That's all it is. Ridiculous. Really? Because if it, if it truly is EAC, then I mean, this person listed out a list that, of games that have the barometer it, game or it's enormous. I mean, it would be yeah, like every last person's machine. Yeah. The reason why I doubt it is, look, let's look at the scope again. He's only hitting Apex Legends players, yeah. right? It's it's unlikely that it's easy anti-cheat. If you had access to f every game that has easy anti-cheat on it, the, the, everything would be on fire right now. <laughs> like, that's not... I, I find that to be incredibly doubtful. By the way, is it Mandy or is it Mand? You just call me Mandy, it's fine. Nice. Mand I said you... I said okay, you. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. <laughs> dude, that is wild. I'm going to hear that the rest of my life, dude. So Again, their brother, dude. They say these nuts all the time, my chat, dude, all day long. That's uh, that's the clip of him playing ranked, and then he gets oh, yeah, banned. banned. And then his teammate, if you can hear, he says, "I got banned too." No, I think I got banned too, bro. Yeah, let's listen to this real fast. Yeah, sorry. Again, server level access. Yeah. It, it doesn't even have to be onto the person's client, right? So, like, think about it this way: if the server is compromised, if this guy has access as an employee would, all of these actions could be done through server level access. Like, you could ban players, you could unban players, you could generate packs, you could trade them to other people, yeah. you could do any of these things because it's all held on the server side. So, like, this also doesn't prove that he has remote code execution on that end person's machine. It's, it's easy for us to assume that he has downloaded something out of that person's computer, run a cheat on that person's computer, and then that person got banned by the automatic easy anti-cheat system. But if he has server-level access, he could just be like, oh, you're flagged as a cheater. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That he right. uh he can turn it up and down. He can he can make the easy anti cheat ban you and he can't. But he can make it yeah. not ban you. So when they're just cheating normally, he, it won't get yep. detected. But he can just turn it on so they get detected instantly if they want to. That's the thing. So the most that I'm getting out of this is I've got I've got two more most likely possibilities. Right. Most likely possibility this dude has server level server level access. Yep. Right. One hundred percent. Now. The secondary possibility of that is he doesn't have direct server level access. There may be a compromised employee's machine in there. Like, that is, that is also very likely, right? Because if you have a compromised employee machine, you would get the same level of access as if you had a vulnerability directly on the server. Because you just ping-pong through it. Because yeah. wouldn't uh, because a lot of employees' machines are usually aren't given full access at all points. So usually they you have get the right one. Scope one. Yeah, I guess if you, you get someone in IT that already has access, yep. <laughs> Fair, fair. They just yeah. fired a bunch You're of people, thinking. though, like the other day. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it, it could also be an employee that's mad. No, there's, because he's been there for a long there. time, though. That's the problem. He's been there for, like, what, two months? Two months, yeah. Sure. I mean, like, so it's, it's yeah. probably not a fired employee, but to be real with you, it could be a, a compromised employee machine. Spear phishing is pretty normal. Uh, what that is, if you've never heard of spear phishing, is I will go after one specific employee because they are high value. A high value employee would be somebody in this case who has access to the servers. Could go through that route. Could, right? Could. Doesn't mean true. Means could. Uh, at that point, he could also have a vulnerability directly in the server. He could have remote code execution on the server. Showing the breadth of the things that he has access to, it is likely he is manipulating the servers in some way, either directly or through an employee's machine, right? It is unlikely that he has individual access to each player's client, though. So that I'm gonna throw it out. That's what I think he has, though. I, I Could highly be. doubt that it's it's an employee machine because I assume that right now they they're scouring, they're trying to figure things out, and they've seen this now for a little bit. Which, if you're mm -hmm. going through a singular employee <laughs> machine, you think spawning in 30 people, finding a packet like this, finding that kind of access mm -hmm. would be kind would of have... at least audit. Again, I'm making the assumption that audit yep. trails exist that they'd be like, oh, this is a very unusual set of activity coming from, you know, Charlene. Let's go talk to Charlene. So working in the industry, we had a couple of different types of attacks, and um, they would happen all the time, right? So nation-state level attacks. They hit American businesses all the time. Other countries get hit all the time as well, right? 
And what you would get a lot of the times is you get a bunch of people that are suddenly in the network and leaving logs and just like be making a mess of the place. It's very obvious. All the alarms are going off exactly as you're stating, right? Yeah. And then they would all disappear instantly. It would ghost 100%. You wouldn't see anything there. It was like no one was ever there in the first place. And the reason that it was happening is because their liege walked in and said, let me show you how this is actually done. Clean up after yourselves. They're still in the network. You just can't see them. So when we're saying like, oh, it's easy to catch them once they're in the network. No, it's not. 100% not. If they know what they're doing, absolutely not. And it also doesn't mean that it's just one machine. Once you get access, once you get a foothold in the network, lateral movement, you find any other vulnerabilities to get other things in the network, you could be reaching out to a whole bunch of different places. All kinds of different stuff. So we don't really know. There's fog of war there. We don't know what's happening inside of there. We don't know how he's accessing these things. Still could be an employee's account. That's why I'm thinking about it. It's like, okay. once you're in the network, you're in the network, right? And with this, could be in the network, could have direct access to the server. Either of those things is possible. Well, I will say there is one silver lining. Uh, Mandy, you said you got 4,000 packs from this? Yeah. That, that's pretty, that's pretty he, sweet. He gives a lot of packs right. to a lot of people. So uh, yeah, like, not I mean, a lot of people. He's given to three. Me, Jen Burton, and Hal. Hal, Hal and Jen Burton are the two other people that got hacked in the tournament, and I'm the th third guy. Yep. You know, just you don't to make sure in case there's testing or anything that needs to be done, you know, in case I have 4,000 packs tomorrow, you know, I just really appreciate that for testing purposes, of course. <laughs> I got you, I'm King, dude. <laughs> yeah, so for, for people who are saying, like, oh, he's in your PC and things like that, there's no indication that he is, right? There's no indication that he's in these players, in, you know, specifically Mandy's PC. There's indication that he has server-side access. There's no indication that he has client-side access, other than those two yeah. other players, which could have directly compromised machines. Their specific machines are compromised, not the game. So in order to prove that there's client-side RCE, we have to show that the guy's actually accessing those machines through the game, which is, there's no indication of that just yet. If they prove it, then great. But don't jump to conclusions just because you think it's possible. Yeah. You have to prove these things when we're dealing with security. And if you can't prove it, don't repeat it. I think a general good rule of thumb is that if you're worried about something, like when it comes to security, like say you truly believe it could be a remote code thing, well, then uninstall it, wait a day, it's fine. Like your response should be strive for maximum security, but your saying things out loud should not be say the most scary thing out loud right which is what people tend to do on the internet is they do nothing and then they just say the worst possible thing which is it's just rc exploit in play apex or in the in the anti-cheat and you're just like okay let's slow down for a second i'm yeah. pretty sure the easy anti-cheat tweeted out uh not that long ago that it's nothing yeah. to do with them that it's a uh respawn thing yeah i actually i actually posted on twitter about this too um about that statement because yeah. it, it's easy for any of these companies to make claims they have to Right, you you have to cover your ass as a company of every course. time. So I said being I said being confident. So th their claim was we have investigated the recent reports of a potential RCE issue with Easy Anti Cheat. At this time, we are confident there is no RCE vulnerability within EAC being exploited. We will continue to work closely with our partners for any follow up support needed. And I said being confident is different from fully understanding the recently claimed RCE vulnerability. With EAC's claim here, I am still waiting to see if the vuln lies with Apex or EAC. Better to be correct over being fast. Don't spread needless fear and wait for more information. Because any company is going to say, oh, it's not us. Yeah. It's never been us, right? And then yeah. it could come out later, like, oh, wait, it was you. But it won't come out. The vuln won't come out for months, right? So I, I would look at this in the same way that I am now, which is we have proof of a server-side vulnerability of some kind, whether that's access through an employee or access directly is unknown. With that in there mind, is there, the there is no on. direct proof that there's access to the clients. Not in mass, not in the way that he would have if he has that kind of access. But at least he hasn't shown his hand, right? And that's kind of where it is, man. That's 100% where it is. Okay. Well, this was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I got... Thank you, I, appreciate I, I don't know, I just got like a... Uh, this is probably fake as fuck, but I got like a thing with like... Also, just confirming the RC has nothing to do with R5, right? R5 is like a secondary game to apex but like where you can like, customize a bunch of stuff so people think it's that's where they got it from so you you download r5 and it's like a it's like a mod for apex or whatever mod he, variant yeah. yeah he just said it, it has nothing to do with r5 at all but like I, I don't know yeah i mean um are is everybody using r5 all the people who are like so for the the two players who are compromised are they using r5 uh i think one is so right there it lends credence to it's not, right? Yeah, Mark, if one of them is and the other one isn't, then like, bleh, you know? Shut the fuck yeah. up. But the thing is, like, people are, like, people are, like, scared to, like, play the game or open the game or whatever, right? Oh, yeah.
No, so people are going to be super afraid of this. And I, I think a lot of the reason why is because they don't understand what remote code execution is. They, they don't understand this. So let me let me draw this on, on the good old whiteboard here. Yeah. Let's say that the attacker's computer is here. And let's say that your computer is here, right? This is the server. If the attacker has remote code execution on the server, it means that they can execute code on this machine from their machine. It does not mean that they can execute code on your machine but it means that they can modify memory and execute commands on the server. That means that they could do things like ban you or generate packs or change your lobby or delete your lobby or anything else that goes on with this, yeah. depending on the server infrastructure that's there. Now, remember, the server is a solo thing. There's authentication servers that handle login, may not have access to that. It could be the actual game servers themselves, so just changing game state but not changing anything outside of that. There may be servers that handle everything with shops and payment processing details because there's a bunch of different standards that have to be applied to payment processing information. Totally different servers, right? So there's lots of different things that go into the server when people talk about servers for games. It's not just one thing. But it's very clear that he has access to purchase and information regarding how many packs your account has. And he has access to the game servers because he can do things like summon in a bunch of bots, right? Those alone does not necessarily mean he has remote code execution on all things because he could be doing a lot more damage. He has execution for two things, summoning bots, banning, actually three things, summoning bots, banning people by flagging their account for easy anti-cheat. And the last one is creating like packs and then giving them people. So those three vulnerabilities are quite bad, but it doesn't show full control. Full control would be much worse, right? Now, just because you have execution on this machine doesn't mean you have execution on the end user's machine. You would have to have another vulnerability. What you would need to do at that point is you have to have remote code execution on the server, and then that would then chain into another vulnerability that's on the client. The client would have to be vulnerable, so you could do that on the end user, which would be your game copy. Yeah. In this case, we can't prove this connection. So it's strange to say that that's the truth, right? We have to prove the connection first. I, That's it. It'd be okay, extremely dude. sophisticated too. I have a question yeah. to you guys though. I think a lot of people want me to ask this question too. So we've been struggling with cheaters and this shit for years, like yeah. two years oh, yeah. plus of just like, and it feels like nothing's happening. Is it what what mm -hmm. what is like the what is like the play if you guys were the people in like what is it called? Yeah. So yeah. so in game security stuff, generally the way that we do this is through band waves. Right, and I, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of band waves for the game, right? Are they doing massive band waves? Of no, like tens it's of not thousands. They end the one time. How many people do they ban in the one band wave? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, it was it was a lot. People like jumped a bunch of places and stuff like that, but they only one time. It was like one time in one for time. like a whole week, where the game actually felt normal. Yeah. But yeah. 100k people are saying maybe is it 100k? I don't Some remember. people are saying 4k I, and 7k. No, no one knows it. I don't know. So generally, the way that we do this is you're supposed to do it every three to six months. And it's not about catching the players cheating. And I know that may be weird, right? Why would you ban players if you're not trying to stop the players from cheating? You're not. It, they're actually ammunition. So what we usually do, we do it every three to six months because you, there's a person on the other side that's making the botting or cheating tools. They're creating those tools, and they're usually monetizing that in some way, right? If yeah. they're not monetizing, whatever. But when you do this three to six month ban, if they are monetizing it, you get a shitload of chargebacks if they're not using crypto. All those players are suddenly angry customers for your opponent. At the same time, you also get a bunch of angry players that are reviewing that bot and telling everyone, don't use this tool. I got banned for this tool. So you do this all at once to overwhelm the shit out of your opponent. All at once. That's why we do every three to six months. And it also stops your opponent, who are the bot creators, from detecting how you caught them. Because they don't yeah. know. It could be any change they made over the last three to six months. You do it then, at that moment to basically just wipe them off the map. And we used to do that all the time at Blizzard. Like, while I was at Blizzard, we banned, um, for me, I banned over 2 million accounts in detections that I formed, right? But there were people on risk that banned like 14, 15 million accounts doing this. And each time one of those ban waves went through, it chipped away at every one of those cheat creators until many of them fell under the pressure because they couldn't handle it. And that helps make the game better. It's okay. not about the players getting banned. It's about using them as ammo every time. Okay. Because right now it feels like Right now, it feels like, dude, every time anyone gets banned, it feels like a manual ban. Like, yep. like we have yeah. to, when we die to someone, we say, okay, uh, seven, eight, nine, five, 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 eight, 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 in my game, he's cheating. Can you ban him? They go and look, boom, aimbotting, ban. It feels like a manual ban every time. And it doesn't feel I'm like... I'm sure that happens. Yeah, it feels like... Apex is free to play, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's live yeah. 
So the moment, here's the other thing. Generally, games that have pay, like costs associated to buying the game, it is, this is much less common. And the reason why is because there's a barrier to entry. Yeah, of course. There's there's way less hacks like this. And I, I know that sucks because free-to-play games are awesome as hell, but the barrier to entry for the attacker is like, whatever, just go make a new one. Who gives a shit, right? There's yeah. nothing to tie to them to yeah. it. They just go generate a new email, go make a new game. Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter. I can make a million Steam accounts a day. Whatever, right? And that's that's how that shit happens. And it's sad. You know, it's it's sad, but that is, that is the state of free-to-play games. You're always going to have that. So what you need to do at that point is just attack the cheat creators. And, like, if they're not doing regular band waves, if they're not doing that every three to six months, there are two reasons why. Either they don't have the manpower for it, or they don't have the detection method for it. It's, it's sophistication or organization issues, always. And, like, sophistication is going to come down to, like, hey, we don't have a method for catching these people. We don't have a good way to detect this other than player-driven reporting, right? That sucks. That's a shit place to be. That's the same place oh. we were for StarCraft 2. Most of the people who get banned in StarCraft 2, they get banned at the end of the season because they get reported and a, a actual risk employee has to go and watch the game to see if that person reacted to something in Fog of War. It sucks. It's a shit way to be, but that is sometimes the only solution, right? Outside of that, you need heuristic detection and that's very hard to develop for. So like, it, it's not always possible. The other one is going to be organization, which maybe, maybe they just don't have the people for it. They don't got the manpower, man. And like they haven't put enough people into that team, it may be tough to do. Because just fire a ton of them. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, sorry. Security. Yeah, firing a ton of them, not great. But also, security people are expensive as shit, dude. That what yep. we do is not cheap, and I can understand that as well. So like on the dev side, I'm I'm wondering if they just can't solve this issue right now, and they might be able to solve it later, or maybe they just can't solve it because they're overwhelmed by it, man. And that's that's it, so awful. It's been a part of EA for yeah. so long, or at least Apex. I mean, I gosh, five years ago, I was getting clapped by the flat line because of cheating. Like that thing, yeah. it just it, it it's been a continuous plague within Apex for years. I don't think it's and it's gotten even I, worse. They've had kernel level anti cheat for years, so I don't think yeah. the problem is solved whatsoever. Yeah, and it's it's something to tell you guys too. I I am very much against kernel level anti cheat. I hate kernel level anti cheat. I don't like that it gives so much access to your machine. It's why I run a secondary machine to be able to go and play uh, Helldivers 2. I actually run it on a second machine and then pipe the video through my stream. So I'm not running kernel level anti cheat on my main machine. That's crazy, and, dude. What? This, yeah, this, this actually shows you that kernel level anti cheat doesn't fix the problem. Yeah, it won't. There's always going to be Apex cheaters in these games. They're always going to be around it. Yep. Apex is a classic example of you don't need kernel level anti cheat. It's not going to work anyway. And now you have access to all of those people's machines at the hardware and software level that you should not have access to. It's it's and not if there's a necessary. compromise with them, the compromise would be one of the worst ones in history, right? You got like worm yeah. level compromisation right there. It'd be crazy. Yeah. And so it's like, why it, have that? Yeah. If kernel level anti cheat gets compromised in any way, if any of these implementations of it, you have full access to every machine that it's compromised on. That's insane shit. And that, that scares the hell out of me, frankly. That's why I don't like it. I'm never going to like it. Well, like, <laughs> well, like, why is Valorant so much better than everyone else's then? I, that's what I don't understand. So for theirs, they, they likely have a better team set up to do this, right? Which means yeah. they have better reporting, they have better logging, they have better systems in place to ban these people, and they have a better regular cadence for bans, right? Could be it's, better culture too. Better culture, be like better culture every, yeah. every person does better logging, has better audit yeah. trails, has like every engineer is purchased into this idea of security as a first class citizen versus yep. security because we got a bunch of players angry, which just makes different software. Yep. And if you and if you think about it, this too, like I worked at Blizzard, we didn't use kernel level any cheat. We still ban millions of accounts. People always make the claim like, oh, wow, it's full of bots. Yeah, it is. And we ban all of them, dude. We ban shitloads of bots. We won't catch everybody every time, but you can't with kernel level any cheat either. And our solution didn't give us full access to your machine because no one should have full level access to your machine except for you, frankly. Like, what the f do you do? Do you just tank it the rest of our lives or what? Yeah, what, what, on, yeah. The player side, on the player <laughs> side, the most that you can do is raise awareness for this, is talk about it on social media, say these are the things that I am seeing as a player without making wild claims because people are going to make wild claims about this. Just remember something, and this is, this is the most important thing. I know it, it doesn't feel like this all the time you're on the same side as the devs. And it feels like the devs are lazy. It feels like the devs don't care. But I guarantee you, there's a bunch of developers trying to solve this, and they can't right now. Okay. They don't have a method to do it, or they don't have the people to do it. And I know that sucks, 
and it doesn't feel that way. But it, it's it's so easy to fall into the trap where you are adversaries with the devs when they're already fighting these guys. Work with them okay. as much as you can. Report as many of these pieces of shit as possible. Put that out on social media. Show that any time you possibly can. And it's it's such a common thing, and it's it, it's funny because I, I normally stream in software and game development here on Twitch, right? That's normally the place that I stream. Yeah. And it's it's such a common thing to have this idea that devs are golden gods that are untouchable, yep. amazing human beings, or they're pieces of shit that don't care. They're other humans, and they're working a job, and they're trying to get this stuff solved, and their own player base turning against them, dude, that feels... That makes it all worse, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's nice also, to hear, There's guys. one more thing you can do yeah. as well, which is that... I mean, at the end of the day, if a company just doesn't care about it, you have to vote with your eyes and vote with your dollars, right? Yep. Like, at some point, you also have to combat it in that kind of sense. And so, like, you cannot support a place and say they're awful and then also keep on going back to them because it's like you're just in a toxic relationship at that point. And there's no point. They're like, oh, we could take away cheating, but, hey, sales are still sales. Everything hasn't changed. We just had the biggest exploit, apparently, and nobody's changed. So whatever, yep. right? Like, they're, it's not going to be serious until they feel it. Yeah, well, there's like, always going to be yeah, there's always going to be a limit for you as a player too, you know. Yeah, always yep. a limit. It's like, but at the end of the day, it's like also a job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, like a it's a job for us, right? Like, if I if I play something else but Apex, it's just it's I'm chalked. Yeah. Like, you know, like I, I probably I don't know I don't know if I can I can survive doing something else than playing Apex, and it's so hard to just say you know fuck it, I don't want to do it anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's scary as hell. And like, uh, as a primary Apex, Apex player, right? Especially streaming this. If you're locked into that one game and that game starts to fail, immediately you're going to feel betrayed by the devs, right? And Agreed. I, I, I would assume that. Yeah, you feel betrayed by the yeah, devs. No, and like, yeah. I totally get that. I 100% get that. Absolutely. And you don't, you're not wrong for feeling that way at all. And the only thing that I can, I can impress on you about that is I, I guarantee there are people in there trying to fix the problem. And the only thing that you can take away from that is if a person is under those types of situations, the whole room is on fire around them. They care about the game just yeah. as much because they go to work every day in a scenario like that where the room is on fire, the player base is enraged, the game's getting hacked to shit. There's two ways that they can go. The player base stays turned against them and they feel like shit and they burn out and then you have less chance of fixing this problem or the player base rallies around them and tries everything they can to beat, the, beat back the cheaters who are in the game. And maybe the devs feel inspired enough where they feel good and they start f moving forward with the community and it's it's yeah. more often than not the player base turns against them everybody loses you know yeah. and there is a limit to that there's a limit to that where you're like you know what this is insane that we're just not able to fix this it's it's just a lost cause and we felt that way with titanfall 2 for ages you remember that like titanfall 2 was just a mess for ages you know yeah. so like this is kind of a tale as old the time we've seen the same exact thing with other games in the past this is not abnormal I guess I guess the only advice I have for you is if you get to a point where you like feel like the game is doing more damage to you than good, transitioning to other games is the only thing you can really do at that point. And that sucks. Yeah. That's not a good place to be, yeah, especially like, as a streamer or a pro player. None of that is good, but it's it's the reality of it. Yeah, but it's it's, way, uh, it's like uh, a lot of people have it. Oh yeah, shit, my bad. No, oh, no, no, go no. For it. You you go, you finish. Oh, the I, 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 was, I, I was just saying it's just like the problem with the problem I have is the communication is so bad that it feels like they don't yep. care. Does that make sense? Like if they tweet it out every now and then, like, "Yo, guys, we know this is a problem. We're really fixing. Like we're trying our best. Keep reporting. You know, you guys got that shit. You know, like stuff like that. It would be fine. But it's I dead agree. silent for like three months, and then you get a oh, yep. look at this new recolor, twenty five dollars, and this new super epic heirloom, seven hundred bucks." Wow, yep. dude, I can't yeah. wait for next season. Like, so, it feels like fucking dog shit, right? Like, what? I know. Community I know. manager so, would be good at this point. I, I, yeah, community manager talking to the player base would be a great idea. And I, I do think they're absolutely failing that. One thing you have to remember, while a company looks like a unified thing on the outside, right? We have a full company, and it's the company that makes Apex, right? The big company. There's marketing teams. There's people that are handling uh, processing for payments. There's people that are handling the storefront. There's people that are handling all of these different each systems, right? The game may be on fire, but that doesn't mean the other teams stop moving. So they had a product line that was planned to come out at these times. They're not releasing it even though the game's on fire. They're releasing it because it's their timeline to release it, yeah, yeah. whether the game is on fire or not. So it may look really shit on the outside, but that team's not going to stop functioning just because the game's on fire. They're just going to keep doing what they're supposed That's their job, right? So... I think the biggest thing here is to understand that the security team and the game management teams are probably having a huge problem. 
Like that's they're the ones that are absolutely on fire. These other teams are just going to keep doing exactly what they're doing, right? That they're, they're paid to do. They're going to go release the products on the timeline. They're going to do all the marketing shit they're normally going to do. They're going to wow. run tournaments to do all the shit that they have to, right? But those security teams and the game management team stuff, they're on fire. And with those, I I absolutely agree. They need more community, like community reporting stuff. They need they need more communication with you guys. Because that's the worst thing you can do is be like, oh, the game's on fire. Let me shut up and sit in the corner. Like, no. Because in today's age on the internet and in general, if there's a bunch of wild ass claims happening like this, if you sit silently in the back, the room is going to fill up with people who are making wild claims. And yep. no one is going to have any other voice to listen to. So they're just going to believe the wild claims. As a company, you guys got to come out and say, this is what we're doing. We know this is a problem. We agree with you. Let's fight them together. Change that shit. Change the narrative back around to be a collaborative one with the players who hate this, because you hate it too as the, as the team that's working on the game. And you know you hate it. You have people working on this shit. Work with the players. Tell them you're working with them. Be public about it. You could turn this around into a win instantly by doing that. Yep. Even if it takes a long time to fix, even if it's really shit to fix, even if you don't have a plan yet to go forward, talking to your player base is always the right choice. Always. They apparently fired their community lead, I just got told. So that's not, Dang. that's unfortunate, Shit. of course. Oh, well, hopefully they're God. to get a new one such that they're able to have a better community lead situation. Because, I mean, obviously comms are super, super important. And how often have you thought some, like, this happens just in regular life where you know somebody, you think they're being a dick, and then it just turns out you just didn't communicate with them. It's like this is just a massive scale version of that. Simple yeah. communication, a audit trail of what they've done, how many accounts they've banned in the last month. Very, yeah. very simple things just to give people a sense of, like that oh, they care. On our team. They yeah. The thing is, the feel. The thing is, the feel. It feels job. like now the job is. No, no, not the job. Apex feels like it's a. It's a money machine to fund other projects, and a lot of the money is not put it, put back into uh, Apex, right? That's what it feels like from my point of view. I obviously don't know that because I don't work there, and it just like it feels like we're just getting, we're just getting rolled and. No one really cares because there's no communication. There's no like, oh, we banned these this many accounts. There's, we did this, or like, oh, this this is coming, or guys, you should hop off the game right now. Or there's no like server resets. There's nothing at all. Yeah. We haven't had a single server reset for five years. Like that, they, yeah, they haven't like. Weird. It's crazy. Yeah, that that feeling is super valid. The the fact that you feel yeah. that way and you know that it, it's not provable, but it feels that way as a player, totally makes sense. I would feel the same way, man. I would absolutely feel the same way. The reason why the company needs to put out communication, the reason why you do that, isn't to convince people that have already written them off. It's to convince people like you that they care. It's to show the people that are on the fence that like, hey, man, I just need you to talk. You're not going to convince all of the players that what you're doing is correct. You're not going to convince all the players you're doing a good job. But the ones that are on the fence that are like, dude, just say something. Just yeah. say anything. Yeah. You know, like you're actually showing them that you give a shit enough to go forward. Right. And yeah, for the pro player community, they need that. For the people who watch the pro players, they need that. Talk to your players. Always talk to your players. They, it's, it's all about communication. Even if you're not able to fix the problem right away, identifying that the problem exists, admitting that the problem exists is a big deal. The only thing that could stop them from doing that is legal constraints. Yep. If they have some kind of a legal constraint in place where they are open to legal liability by talking about this publicly I'm due to ongoing investigation or things. some kind of other legal well, issue, what, then yeah. They couldn't talk about it. That'd be the there only could be other reason. Too. There yeah, could be there fiduciary could be. responsibilities where, like, if you talk about the fact that your game's compromised, you could tank the stock price, and thus you're supposed to pretend like everything's yeah. good. Yeah. Despite that being terrible, that could just be the literal the reality, reality they're living under. Yeah, but it's Which is at sad. the end of the day, it's EA, dude. Yeah. Like, they, they, there's been massive cheater problems, and there was one like a long time ago. The only tweet we got from EA or Respawn was. Oh, we did amazing in Q1 because we sold a bunch of uh, uh, heirlooms and everybody loved the heirlooms. They're like, yeah, what? Your, like, dude, I'm, dude yeah. everyone is literally like, I'm I'm sitting here and getting absolutely molly by cheaters and aimbotters and shit all yep. day long. And then you have all the like nine to five dads that come home and sit on the couch playing on the PC, PS, right? Buying all their stuff. Yep. And the thing is, I would, I would, there's nothing I would love to more than do than to convince everyone to stop spending money on the game because if people keep spending money on the game then they think everything is fine but if people stop spending money on the game they'll realize that what they're doing is actually not that good right 
you, sure, you probably you just can, nailed you, it on the head right there with yeah. that one because I'm not going to probably experience much for cheaters because cheaters yeah. aren't probably going to be in my silver four league, right? They're just not going to be there. So oh. it's not really the problem that I'm experiencing, which means I'm going to be buying the stuff. I'm going to be enjoying the game. And it's really you guys that get the shaft on this. Yeah, yeah you got to think about like, where's your limit, right? Because the limit is going to be, hey, we really want the devs to reach out. We really want a community manager to be in place. We really want to hear communication from that. At a certain point, you're like, this is stupid. I'm not getting what I need out of this relationship with these developers. And I need to walk away or I need to tell them, hey, we're not going to be buying anything. We're just going to play your game for free. Because that's the whole that's the whole reality of it, right? Because, yeah, at a certain point, you have to you have to kind of, you know, pull the leash and be like, stop it. Because to be real with you, games exist because players play them. As a dev, I only exist because people buy my game. Yeah. As a streamer, I only exist because the community watches this stream. They vote with their subs and bits. They vote with their eyes, right? And yeah, there is a there is a limit to all of this where you just feel so negatively as a player, where you get up every day and you're like, God, I'm going to have to go fight a shitload of cheaters again, and we're getting no communication about this. And that's, yeah, there's a limit to that. And you have to decide what that limit is for you. Every player would. Yeah, but I, I reached my limit a long time ago. I'm not gonna lie. No, you didn't, because you're still playing. Yeah, but that's because <laughs> that's because it pays the bills, brother. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. I ain't got I ain't got motion like that. I, I don't have billions in the bank, you know? So I'm yeah. just I'm just trying to fucking, I'm just trying to save up a, a bunch of money. Yep. Yeah, no, no, it makes sense. Saving up a bunch of money. I mean, the, transitioning your content is kind of the only way you can really do that, and that's tough as shit. I know how tough that is. Especially when you're known as like the Apex player. Or whatever it is that you're doing like yeah. transitioning content to anything else is very very hard and yeah i guess the only way you could do it is like maybe one stream a week you do something else and i, I that sucks like it's a shit feel but that's all you can really do transition to being like fps guy you know like that's there's there's nothing you can really do outside of that if the game lets you down the yeah. game lets you down because like we we've seen the same kind of a thing with major players like if, if you're a Fortnite only streamer right if yeah. you're an apex only streamer if you're a tarkov only streamer if that game fails You've you've tied your whole brand to only that game, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work in the long I agree. run because these games will eventually die. You know. Yeah, I agree. But the thing is, it's the, what is annoying. I played Overwatch before. You guys know the Overwatch story. Overwatch is complete, utterly bad now. Um, I know. And it's the sad. thing is, like, it's just <laughs> it's just jumping from games that where it feels like you just have the game right here. You have the perfect game, yeah. but it feels like it's mismanaged and not well. Like you have like, let's just say you have a beautiful Ferrari down the. Uh, on the street right but like you you kick it every time you see it or you slam the doors or whatever right and it, then it breaks and you're like oh no what happened dude you know that's what it feels like you have like a perfect prof yeah. product here but it feels like it's not well taken care of and it sucks from a, a player point of view that i'm sitting here i'm like i can't do anything like I, I, this game is this game is almost perfect it has like all the things that i don't know it has like all the good things and all the qualities that people ask but in yeah. reality it just feels like it's not like nobody cares about it you know it, it sounds like you're grieving for a game that you know is dead and i understand <laughs> that feeling like 100 yeah. percent. hey like a lot of yeah. a lot of people felt that way when overwatch 2 kind of shit the bed and i felt that way because i i was there when we were working on overwatch 1 right and I, I did a bunch of security stuff for overwatch 1 before we launched and it's an awesome game and i hate where overwatch 2 is today so i get it's it so i bad. super get it it sucks. Yeah. It's awful. They, it's like they ripped the soul out of it and they didn't understand why it worked in the first place. Like, it's, it's a very common thing. Something we always have to remember about this stuff is games are made by people. And when those people leave, the name is still there. The game is still there. But it doesn't mean it's the same game. Yeah. Because those people aren't there anymore. The people that made it great in the first place don't exist at the company anymore. And they made it good in the first place, right? The best example I have for this is like Hearthstone when it launched. Amazing game. Awesome as shit. I agree. Cool card game, right? Ben Brode was the uh, game director for that game. He was, he was the lead game designer, game director for, for Hearthstone. He actually left Blizzard. Hearthstone's kind of fallen into disrepair. People don't like it as much anymore, right? He moved off and made his own company called Second Dinner. Second Dinner's first game is Marvel Snap. Ben Brode moved off and made his own card game. And Marvel Snap is fun as shit. I love it. I think it's super fun. A lot of people really enjoy it as well. So people like that that are really good at making these types of games when they leave that game doesn't have that vision anymore yeah that happens when you do mass layoffs like this the same thing can happen and it sucks yeah. it sucks so bad because you're like it's the same game it's still the same game the company name is the same company they didn't even change ownership 
but they did change ownership. The cult. Because those same people aren't I see, working. I see there. what you're saying. Yeah. 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 It sucks. It's so shit feeling. Yeah, but yeah, I I, I know what you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's just ass that you're that yeah. you're just standing here just watching from like the sideline. You can't do anything, right? Yeah. No, it's it sucks. And like even even for me, like when we were going and banning people. You know, there were tons of things where it's like, God damn it, I can't find a way to detect this. I can't find a way to catch this this person, right? I remember doing a Hail Mary thing one time because I was like, I want to get rid of fishing bots in World of Warcraft because so many goddamn fishing bots. The moment the expansion yeah. came out, it's like fishing bots everywhere, right? And I formed this whole detection. I was like finding all the different methods to do it. And I put it out and I was like, I'm going to catch so many fishing bots here to do this. It banned three people. <laughs> Dang, dude. It was like a full thing with like an MO with millions of players. Like three dudes got detected. I was like, God damn it. You know, like I, I spent like two months on it, dude. Fishing so, like, yeah, hurt. This, the same thing happens on the other end. Like some of the shit just fails. And you're like, God, I didn't even, I didn't even, I spent all that time and all that money to like do this thing and it didn't even work. So, like, it, it does happen. And it happens on the same side. I think, I think the best thing to remember in all of this is the devs who care, they're on your side, man. They are as the players. And it's, it sucks because there may be things where they can't communicate to you because of legal shit or financial shit. There may be things where they, they can't form a detection for the thing right now. They're doing investigation. They don't want to give away anything. They don't want to tip their hand to the person who's attacking. Like there's, there's so many reasons not to, but I, I honestly believe that if companies were more open with communication to the players, there would be less bad feelings when things like this happen. Cause this is going to keep happening. Attacks yeah. are going to keep happening on companies. Attacks are going to keep happening on games. And if the companies can communicate with the players and not have, yeah, exactly, radio silence is bad. If, if there's no radio silence, if you actually can talk to people and say, hey, we are aware of this, we're working on it, I'm sorry, that's a great way to be. It's, it's the, honestly, I feel like it's the only way to be right now because otherwise toxicity is just going to run rampant because you have players that believe in the developers, that believe in the game, that know that it could be something better. And then you have people that are like, this game's shit. Right. And the ones who are just like this game shit and that's all that they care about, they're going to win if you don't say anything. I'm, I'm, you have to prove to yeah. the players that you're doing something. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a mix of between both of them. I'm not going to lie. So I don't want to sit here and act like I'm a, I'm a saint or something. Right. Well, yeah. no, you're, you're, you're tilted and I get it. Like I would be tilted, dude. You've, you've got every, you have a whole career invested in this game. You have a stream invested in the game. You're a pro player for this game. Of course you're tilted. Like, why wouldn't you be? That's crazy that you wouldn't be. Right. This directly affects you both financially. It makes you nervous all of the time because now you're like, what, where's my career going? Like, what am I going to do? What if the game dies? What if everyone stops playing the game? Like, of course you'd be upset. Like, there's, yeah. that's not wrong. That's not wrong at all. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And like, dude, that's got to be exhausting as shit. So I get it. I super get it. I mean, the reality is that you should always be upset about something you love in some sense yeah. because it's never in a perfect condition there's no such thing as a perfect condition item well, of course not. so you should always be motivated for something to be better now there's obviously like bad reactions versus good reactions towards it and that kind of shows you know the state of where you're at and if your reaction is always purely bad then obviously it's gone on long enough that it's no longer about just simply you and the love of it it's now turning into the other side which is a little bit more difficult Yep. And it's the same reason why, like, I try to diversify my content over the internet, right? Like, I put stuff on YouTube. I'm actually streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time right now. Like, what if Twitch died today? If Twitch died today. Yeah. That would be horrifying. I'm scared of that, right? I'm always scared yeah. of that happening. Like, no one likes Twitch anymore. Oh, shit, right? But we stream on YouTube as well. And there will be other platforms in the future. And maybe one day Twitch will die. The only yeah. thing you can do is adapt. And you have to keep your sanity during the process of doing that. That's all you can do. It's, you can't control the company, but you can definitely control yourself. And you've got a community of people that care about you around you, obviously, because you've got a big community of people that are watching you on your stream. So yeah. that's, that's all you can rely on. They carry us, man. That's what the I, community I, does. I hate to tell you, but 11,000 people don't watch you just purely for your gameplay. Uh, people like you. I don't, I don't, I don't have 11K like you, normally. That's, that's not how this works. It's more like the thing happened yesterday, so people are curious, right? And then it's a nice... True. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to be honest here. It's a really nice conversation to have because I haven't been venting or anything like that. It's oh, yeah. just like, like to anyone, it, the only thing I've been, I've just been annoyed every single day. And it's kind of nice to hear it from the other side of like you guys that actually make the, the games. And because I don't think like that, you know, I don't sit here and think, oh, what is the developer doing right now? All I see is no communication. The game's fucking dog shit. And every time they make a new yeah. update, it feels like they just randomly threw a dice and just put that in this game. They're like, oh, it just made this character mega op and you're like what yeah. 
Because well, yep, the game balance team is like, well, we're going to keep balancing the game. And, yeah. and the marketing team's like, we're going to keep marketing the game. And the microtransaction team's like, we're keeping you to make microtransactions. And the security team is like, my hair is on fire. Please help me. Yeah. And like, the monitoring <laughs> team's like, we'll get you last month's balance. Don't worry. We'll get it to you. You just keep balancing it. We'll tell you what happened six months ago soon. Yeah. Oh, it's so rough, dude. It's so rough. It just, By yeah, the way, I do got one just... tweet that I think is pretty interesting to read uh, from RSPN Hideouts. Uh, apparently, Connor Ford, he's the apex security of response. Yeah, he is. Just fresh off the presses he said i see comments and posts saying anti-cheat teams should have been laid off you should know no more team sees this and it hurts there is no empathy shown for those affected by the layoffs nor the work we do day in and day out there wouldn't be shit to talk if we could show you the numbers show us the numbers i mean it sounds like i mean there it is it sounds pretty straightforward let's see the numbers yeah, that probably help a lot how, how else is really cool that in the discord chat how does it really yeah, cool yeah, and i talk like to that. him uh, we're uh, uh, it's like we're friends. I would say I've spoken with him on Discord and stuff like that uh, a lot. But um, a lot of people, you know how it is in the gaming community. They wish bad upon people, even though they don't know behind the scenes what's happening. And a lot of the Apex Twitter normies, if you could say it, they just go after everyone there and say everyone should get fired and you don't deserve a job and stuff like that. Uh, that's of course not super nice to say or anything when you don't know what's happening behind the scenes, right? They've yeah, this never is, held a real job, that's why. This, this tweet is super important. No. So I see comment and post saying anti-cheat team should have been laid off, like we were talking about, right? Shut the, the f*** up, The comment right after this is, bro, you do literally nothing but make EDM music and tweet how you're Wait, going to the root of the issue on cheating. You, you've yet to really Dude, nail I, down I guess a real, never mind. the cheater situation. Never mind. If you aren't doing never the job mind. you're paid to do, then you why are you they're cheating, dude. That's exactly what I was talking Jeez. about. Being adversarial Go with nice. the devs is not going to fix this <laughs> issue. And he said, Imagine respond. a human acting like a yeah. human and doing things outside of work. I know this is a yeah. crazy thought, but it, it could happen, right? As a game developer, I do all kinds of shit outside of this. I run a ferret rescue. I grow lion's mane mushrooms in my backyard. Like, I, I go on walks. I go out into the forest in my local area because I love the shit out of it. Like, I do all kinds of shit. We're human beings. That's the point, right? So, like, this yes. dude's just like, you are only your job. Do the, do the thing, developer. Do the thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. no, dude. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense at that point, right? So he said, maybe because I am doing my job, I'm paid to do and doing it well enough to retain it. There isn't an end all solution for cheaters, which he's correct about. It's a cat and mouse game. You will find yep. a way to catch them. They'll find a way to get away the next time. Mino, thank you for those gifted subs. Very I, have, nice. I have to uh, open the door real quick. Is that okay? You're back out one oh, minute. Sure, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. He said, that should be apparent. Armchair devs like yourself have the gall to say stuff like this without knowing the full picture. He is 100% correct in that. Yep. Tip. The meeting is not right now. Wolf, it's in eight minutes. I'm good. Calm, calm. 1030. But yeah, no, that's... That's he's 100% correct. He's 100% correct. So like devs are not the cause of this. It's not that devs don't care even if you're not seeing action take place. They have a job. They have a job. I know that tweet is 4 days old. They've been having this issue for 2 months. So yes. it, I mean not just yes. I mean they've been having this issue for years at this point when it comes to cheating. Like they're the, yep. he's under no delusion that this is an extremely difficult thing and it's been long stem. It's just become very popular recently. Yep. I'm going to I'm going to quote tweet this. Yeah. I mean, the biggest issue that I have is that whenever I hear people talk like this or act like this, it's largely because they've never had a very public facing job. You know, I yep. work at Netflix. Guess what? You know how many times something goes wrong? I get tagged 9,000 times in a post every single time. Yeah, it's because of that. Netflix mentioned, I know Netflix mentioned, by the way, but it's like real talk. Like that's, it's, it, whenever you work on a public facing thing, when something goes wrong, you're, you are the idiot that made the thing go wrong. And it's just like, okay, hold on. It might just be more confusing. Yeah. And it never makes sense to attack developers in the face of cheating in games. Devs are on the side of the players. They don't want this happening as much as you don't. They also can't communicate everything they are doing. I mean, the, the amount of, like, NDAs and things that they have on this stuff is just so wild. People have no idea how hard it is. Generally, when it comes to any company like this, uh, you can ask, you can never ask a question that involves a number. It's like a good yep. rule of thumb. If you say, have you banned a lot of people? They'll say, yeah. Say, how many people? They will just, I, sorry, I cannot say anything about that. That, a is, lot of them. Yeah. that is a number. I cannot say number. And I said, there are legal hurdles, financial implications, and they would be tipping their hands to the attackers. Fog of war goes both ways. Thor, oh. did you say you have to take off here shortly? Yeah. Six minutes. Mandy, thanks for joining us. It's kind of out of the yeah. blue. Sorry that yeah. you got attacked in chat to come join a real. No, no, no. I, I said it. Discord I was. Call. I know. I was watching you uh, before. I was just sitting in queue, 
And I, I just said, I just told Chad, like, someone asked me if I, if I, like, I just said that it sounded like you guys weren't 100% sure of what you guys were looking at yep. because you guys were talking about ranked, but it was like in a pro match that it happened and stuff. So it was just like, if I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to help if you guys needed it, yeah. of course. Yeah. So this is actually Apex uh, Security. So I'm, I'm actually putting out a tweet so you can see this too, Mandy. Is Apex Security at Respawn, speaks softly and carry a big band hammer. I make music sometimes. My views are my own, right? It's a personal account. And I, my response to the statement is, it never makes sense to attack developers in the face of cheating in games. Devs are on the side of the players. They don't want this happening as much as you don't. They also can't communicate everything they are doing at all times. There are legal hurdles, financial implications, and they would be tipping their hands to the attackers. Fog of war goes both ways. The only thing I would suggest is letting players know you care as developers, exactly as he is doing here. Because that's what he's doing. It's him saying, absolutely. It is saying yeah. that, you know, he cares. And he's going to get lambasted in the comments for it. People are going to burn him alive. But, of like, course. that is just how that's going to go, right? Yeah. I guess there's a typo in the tweet where... <sighs> don't listen to chat. You, you <sighs> just tweet with your heart, Thor. Don't, don't listen to them. Uh. It says hands. It says hands. It doesn't say hats. You goblins. You guys trying to one guy me all together? Don't. Devs is not. Devs is not. Oh, I swear to God, I'm posting this. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> My whole chat just tried to one guy me. God damn it. Uh, so, Outrageous. so Mandy, where can we find you besides for uh, on Twitch? Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, I'm not that type of Maybe guy, dude. I'm not gonna lie. No, look, <laughs> I'm, no, no you're, I'm you're, not. No, no, no dude, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I can't. Your shit. No, I don't. No, I don't yeah. do it. I don't do that. I don't do that. Put it in. It's too yeah, late. Gonna, it's too late. Do it. I'm looking at your profile and I'm finding your stream. All right. Go. Go. I found his YouTube. I already got his YouTube. Okay, dude. Mandy well, with an underscore no. at the end. Okay. There's no. Be... Where's the D's at this? I, I don't. You should lean in. Lean into these nuts. Dude, that's dude, Mandy's nuts. That is what my community wants to be called sometimes. But I, there's no it's way I'm be calling them, them that ever. But no, to be real with you, dude, like, you've got a really thriving community around you. You know, and it's it's super apparent that that's happening. Like you, you said, you don't have this many people normally, but if we go to like Twitch Tracker, we pull you up, right? I hope you're getting exposed live, dude. That's you've got that's... four thousand. Yeah, but you've you've got four thousand six hundred average viewers. That's not small. You know, like, and you have to remember that's not small. You're in the top two hundred and twenty eight streams on the platform. So understand that even if right this there. game dies, you have a large amount of community that cares about you right now. That's in your chat. They give a shit about you, not just your gameplay. And it's easy to forget that. It's really easy to forget that. Thor literally just caught you in 4K. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I also, that's why I do variety stuff as one of the only Apex streamers, too. I try and, like, make sure that people like watching not just me doing Apex stuff, right? Yeah. And I have to end my stream in a moment here. And I'm going to be raiding you. Get wrecked. Okay. Get wrecked. All right, take care, guys. Because <laughs> I got a meeting to go. All right. All right, Thor, I'll Dude. the video later. Dude. Huge thank you, I think, from everyone else, too. Thank you guys for letting me join, and thank you for, um, what's it called, just opening my yeah. eyes for other things than just me f***ing hating the game every single day. Anytime, dude. Yeah, yeah. And if, if you want to talk any other time, hit me up. Like, I'm always yeah. around. I stream 12 hours a day, every day, except for Thursday, so... Yeah, <laughs> I see. 10-hour ten, Andy, Thursday dude. Being Thursday. Actually, part-timer. Couple-hour Andy over here. 12 hours is nuts. Uh, I will see you guys later. Yeah. Bye, everybody. All right, bye. Hope you guys have an amazing day.